In this video, I'd like to cover basic practical aspects of USB programming in STM. USB on the go, full speed, CDC to be exact. You can find this periphery in most metal and high performance models like 407 or 105 in my example. I'm using this STM32F105 for a device. I have two reasons not to use HAL and Cubemx, but to make my own library. In the first place, I find HAL and Cubemx implementation too much oversized. Uh, can you see the difference? This is a comparison of HAL and do-it-yourself versions. The same intended use, the same buffer sizes. Also, if you pull a bunch of overcomplicated libraries for a project, assembly time goes up greatly. The second reason will be shown later in this video. I assume that you have read the USB specification as well as ST reference manual and now you don't know how to start. Alright, download my code and I'll give you some details. I am also keeping there the pictures of simplified hardware, schematics and clocking. You need these four files to include descriptors, device descriptors. I am using standard descriptors from STM example for personal use, but I am not sure if you are free to use them in commercial projects. If somebody knows, please leave what you know in the comments. Macrosses, some macrosses to make coding more convenient. Headers, library engines, headers and defines. In the header file you can change the settings like FIFO allocation and message size and the engine itself. Now let's go over the code. USB programming is all about endpoints. Hence I made an endpoint structure. Application buffers. Don't confuse with FIFO buffers. These buffers are used to keep data after reading a corresponding FIFO or to set data for TX transmission. Endpoint statuses for data flow control. And finally, here are endpoint callbacks. They are called when a corresponding interrupt for a certain endpoint is active. Here I try to show you how the USB interrupts are supposed to work. Sending data looks like this. Initial data and length are set in set TX buffer. Then TX callback is called right from this function. FIFA write, ZLP or whatever, this all is done here in TX callback. And then in endpoint interrupt happens. The interrupt is invoked repeatedly every time a packet is sent. This interrupt stops transaction if all data is sent or continues. Start of frame interrupt calls transmission scheduler procedure in case you have a lot of data to send and this all can be packed into a single frame. How does a receive operation work? In Rx not empty interrupt you read out new data and after a certain amount of bytes are received um, this is this all according to the settings in size registers. Mm. If, this, if this was a data out packet it would be read in read FIFA function otherwise in read setup FIFA. Read FIFA writes data into endpoint Rx buffer. Then out endpoint invokes endpoint Rx callback. You can do whatever you want here. In my example I am demonstrating echo. Read setup. FIFA writes data into setup request structure and then does enumeration. Back to the reason not to use hell. When it comes to tryouts 
you want to test the maximum speed from a host to the device and vice versa. Transmission from a host seems to be alright, but when I try to generate the maximum possible traffic from my device to a host, I saw this. Here I am trying to send 64 kilobyte messages from the device to a host chunk by chunk with hell libraries. The device gets stuck with these register values. I've tried to keep sending data in main cycle to use different delays, but nothing works out. The registers show us that in endpoint is busy and TX54 has some data written and stuck. I had been looking for the answer and found that STM probably had borrowed the on-the-go implementation from another company and we see its people work funny without proper adaptation. People complain that if you set all FIFOs by the book, you can find it not working. Finally, I've tried several FIFO size configurations and also I implemented a recovery routine for this case. And uh, the code looks much more complicated than I planned, but this is a solution for me. When testing a USB device, make sure you have no troubles on the host side. It can be critical and you may have different results on different platforms and or terminals. So, so now I'm gonna test my device on different platforms like Linux, Android and Windows. In this test, I'm sending a 23 megabyte picture from a host to the device and vice versa. So uh, this is a simple echo. I'm not impressed with the speed, but this works.
you guys can find a simple circular buffer template in my example and modify it in the way you need. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments.